All right. Um, <laughs> so I, I posted this one in a recent video. Um, I wasn't here for it at this time. I'm now here for, even realistically, I'm still not really here for that. I'm actually here for everything because this does like a, uh, a big haul um, and they serve like a massive air handler. Now it's all kind of like retrofit. It's all old as shit. They don't want to replace it. So they just keep fixing stuff, right? One of those setups. Anyway, um, <coughs> excuse me. So I'm here because these two say that they're on the BMS, but the supply air temps are currently, I think the ambient temp was about, or return air temp was 19, then the supply air temp was 21 degrees. So obviously, you know, running off one and a quarter stage is not gonna do much. Uh, so yeah, we're basically here to work out why these two are currently not running, even though they said they should be. Um, now, there was another another tech came out here, I think I said in the video that um, they were coming out on that Monday, which they did. And they went, they dove into this one a little bit and they found that there was, uh, again, like I said, this is all retrofit stuff, but they found that basically there was two expansion devices in the one line. One of them was a like a bi-flow and one of them was just a singular, uh, like a one-way. And so it was just causing extremely low suction pressure. Um, now, obviously that's the same setup for all of them and this is the only one that's icing up, but still, like it's, uh, it definitely needs to be rectified. So anyway, um, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna jump into these two first. I've isolated that one, we'll just leave it off and it can defrost over the next couple of hours. Uh, but yeah, let's jump into it. We're off to a good start. <laughs> so we've got a fault and we've got a fault on that. Surprisingly though, they appear to be different. So this is a, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have a look at what this one is, but uh, either way, they're flashing differently. Um, all right, so this one's CPU is on and system one, I would say is a slow flash. Um, CPU on, slow flash, high pressure, you reckon? Wow, there you go. Okay, well, we'll look into that. Um, huh. Uh, and let's quickly work out what that one is. So what is that? That's a CPU slow flash and system one fast flash. So CPU slow flash, system one fast flash, sensor open circuit. Righto, okay. Yeah, all right, well, we'll start with this one. This one's just gone into a defrost. So you can see a bit of ice build up down the bottom. Um, but yeah, so this one has gone into a defrost. Um, yeah, maybe after we've done with the rest of this, we'll look into that, see if that defrost uh, board is actually even working, or what the setup is, man, honestly, like I said, <coughs> excuse me, I, uh, I've never been here before, never looked at these things, so we'll jump into it and have a look after. I've jumped over to this one just because I, I didn't bring up my gauges yet, or my uh, probes yet, so I'll just quickly see <coughs> if this one, so it's saying sensor open circuit, so I appears to only have two. Um, down here, I was coming out of what? Uh, four, five, eight, and nine. So like four, five, discharge, eight, and nine, coil. Is that the only ones? It does appear to be. All right, well. Stay. Uh, so we'll just quickly test. We can do this with one hand. Ah. Get in there, you bastard. There we go. Uh, DC volts, 3.0, otherwise known as three. And that one's basically the same. So they do appear to be okay. Uh, maybe I'll just kill power quickly and test the resistance just in case. So 15K ohms. Um, I think I once had to do this on an email air unit. So I reckon I've got some literature on whether or not that's correct. I'll quickly just jump in and have a look actually. So, you know, 16 to 17 degrees. Um, that chart said that the resistance should be around the mark that I was getting here. And then the voltage was that three volts or 2.9 to three volts. So that one seems pretty good. Happy to pass that, I'll put that one back in. Uh, and then we will take out the other one and just confirm that. That one's reading a little lower, uh, but it's still only like, according to the chart, like a degree out. So, I mean, I'm not too stressed about that. I mean, they seem fine, man. Um, yeah, interesting. We might uh, we might reapply power. Oh, burn mark or something. All yeah, right. 
Yeah, I'll just turn power back on and just confirm voltage out of the board again, just to make sure. Um, but I will have to mosey on down and go get my uh, probe bag, and then deal with the... I reapplied power and just quickly tested the voltage. I removed the thermistor and just tested the voltage coming out of the board. Five volts, man, so... Um, yeah, interesting. I mean, I'd chalk it up to a one-off, except this isn't a one-off. I think this one keeps failing, so... We gotta keep digging into it. Um, in the meantime, I have gone and got my probes though. So we'll, uh, we'll quickly probe up on this thing and see what our processes are doing. Um, just to confirm, our switch is closed. I have tested between earth and each side and you know, 14 volts or whatever. Um, all right, probed up. Let's turn this thing on. Oh, wrong way. Right, units just started. Um, funnily enough, this one didn't even try to start. It's back into a uh, sensor fold, so interesting. Anyway, we'll look at the pressures. Just gonna let that one run for a while um, while I monitor the pressures and kind of look into this one a bit more. Um, yeah, weird that we've gone into a sensor fault, even though the sensors are completely fine. This one over here, you can see the condensing temp is slowly increasing um, steadily over time. I think it started out at about 40 odd, and now it's at about 47. So we'll keep watching that. I think it's going to keep going up and then cut out eventually. Uh, I had a look at that pressure control. I couldn't see what its cutout is. Um, we're probably somewhere in the high 50s. So this one's just gone into a defrost. I mean, you know, suction temp of, uh, or I should say, that temp of minus 13. Not, not particularly surprising. Anyway. So interestingly, right, this is the coil sensor for this one which is reading 60 ohms, that's about minus 11. But when I first tested it, right, so I put my probes in and I was getting a reading of 1.2 K ohms, which is reading like above 70 degrees. Had a phone call, took that back, have come back and retested it and now I'm getting 70 ohms. And it was, yeah, that's really weird. And like, and I've tried to recreate it to see if I was like, my probes were misplaced and I can't recreate anything Right, let me try. See, every time I put it in and I move it around, right to the end, it's always coming back. So I'm not sure why I was getting that 60, uh, sorry, that 1.2K I'm reading. I'm wondering if, if there was an issue with the way that the sensor was reading from the board on this one, why it's not going into the defrost, because Everything else is going into a defrost relatively quickly, actually, except for this one. Um, these two have gone into like two defrosts since they've been running. This one has it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn it back on and see if this thing will kick into a defrost. Um, there's no water supply up here, man. And yeah, we, we could be waiting literally the next two days for that to defrost. So let's just see if we can get this thing up and running uh, and go into a defrost. Honestly, if the compressor's made it this far, I don't think an extra 20 minutes is going to hurt it. Maybe. <laughs> Another interesting development. This is that uh, CU3, the one with the sensor fault. I'm now measuring the DC volts as millivolts. So let me see if I can move that around. So that's weird, because that was definitely outputting 5 volts and then 3 volts with the sensor plugged in. So 3.8 volts, and now this one again is 2.7. I'm gonna quickly pull that out and test the voltage coming out of the board now. Hey, check that out, see? This this one as well, so same coil, coil sensor is now reading 650 ohms. So the voltage out of the board is fine, but this one's reading six, yeah. Uh, so there you go. <laughs> I'm not sure why that's all of a sudden reading weird. But it's the same thing that that one over there is doing. Same sensor as well. Hmm. All right, this is the iceberg unit. So voltage coming out of that coil sensor, 1.5. 1.5, yeah. All right, I'll quickly double check what that is. Yeah, so 1.4, 1.5 is like 40 to 50 degrees. So uh, that's why this thing isn't going into defrost. But again, you know, I'm gonna pull, again, I'm gonna pull the sensor, retest the sensor, measure the voltage coming out of the board. I can't show you, the, I haven't brought my uh, tripod up, so I can't show you measuring the voltage, but all I'm doing is pulling it out, testing across the two prongs, and it should get five volts, right? That's all I'm doing. Um, so I'm gonna do that, and then confirm the resistance of this sensor again, because yeah, it's 
it's doing something weird. Voltage out of the board was fine, but now I'm getting a reading of 6k ohms on this resistor. <laughs> so yeah, that, that resistor is fucked. Um, we're gonna replace that. We're gonna replace the other one behind me as well. Uh, let me kill power. Just quickly testing the uh, voltage output of these ones as well. So this is the discharge. Hold on one sec. Discharge, so millivolts, which I had a look before. That should be fine because it's probably going to be above. I think the highest it went was 67 at 0 0.8. So that's fine. And then we'll do that one. 4.2, which is probably in the negative. So that seems fine. Alrighty. Uh, again, it's going to be higher than 67, so fine. And yeah, that's going to be fine. So these two appear to be reading okay. That one needs a new coil sensor. That one needs a new coil sensor. And to be left off to defrost. I just pulled the sensor. Just pulled the sensor to have a look. You can see at the top. You know, it's uh, usually is that nice like black. Uh, top, so obviously they're trying to keep the moisture out, but that itself is just completely open. So yeah, sensor needs to be replaced. And I was just testing and see if I'd pull it out and if I. Uh, you know, made it warmer, what would happen to the voltage out of the board, but nothing, man, it's, it's too far gone, so. We'll leave this thing running. Um, it's not gonna last long. What we probably end up doing, I'm still monitoring this one. That one is okay. Iceberg is like another faulty sensor too. We'll go pull it off and have a look, but no, actually, maybe we'll see. <laughs> um, but yeah, either way, new sensor for both those two. Uh, yeah. Another thing on this one, the uh, crankcase heater, not working. I'll probably go around and test them on all of them, to be honest with you. Um, it's usually on systems that are this old, then none of them work. So I'm gonna leave this one isolated. Um, I, I'm not gonna wait around for that thing to defrost. I'll be here until next week. Uh, that one's going to fold out again. It's currently running and those two are currently running. So air handle has a supply air temp now of 28 degrees. So, you know, seven, eight degrees higher than what it was when we started. <coughs> Excuse me. Like I said, these things are ancient, man. They've had that much work done to them. And yeah, it's, it's one of those things. They just don't want to replace it. So here we are. Anyway, um, it probably won't be me coming back to replace those sensors, so I might just put this in one of the uh, compilation videos.